Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at why you should be using the relationship and the data model in Excel, also available to us, when working with your tables and predominantly when you're trying to bring data from multiple tables into one pivot table. Uh, I haven't got an example to show you the problem I'm trying to solve, but in essence what it is is when we've got multiple uh, sheets of information or tables or whatever format they're in and you're wanting to consolidate them into one single piece of information so that you're able to then provide a pivot table to obviously go through and analyze that information. As you're aware that the situations or the solutions to trying to solve that problem you would be trying to put information all into one sheet maybe by using VLOOKUP or any other formula so that you had like one store of all the data so that you could pivot pivot off that one uh, central piece or source of data. What we're going to do in this is show you that actually you can retain keeping those in, that information separate in separate tables uh, and how you can then obviously use the relationship manager to obviously manage those relationships and identify those relationships between the table and then be able to treat them as one whole data set. So in order to do so we've got some information here. So we've got a sales table what gives us simply just the country code, uh, the date um, and obviously the amount of the sales uh, and it's probably obvious but we obviously the country code relates to a country um, in the country table that we'll get to in a second. So for each country you've had to see for every month and I believe we went from July 2019 to June uh, of 2020 so there's 12 months of data you'll see that there is again a month for each of those and uh, an amount uh, of sales achieved in that month. Similarly for budget, we've got a similar, very similar data set. It's got the country code again, the month or date, and then you've got the amount, what was budgeted for that country in that given month. And then lastly, we've got the country table, what gives us the country code, and then obviously the country that aligns to that country code. So these are the three tables that we want to bring together and be able to just pivot into one single pivot table to allow uh, obviously us or if in a real world experience the end user to be able to filter through this data uh, and the benefit obviously keeping it separate is as these two data tables or multiple data tables uh, continue to grow or new information is added to them everything is going to flow through and refresh rather than having to uh, obviously update any formulas, make sure things are pulling into new rows, so on and so forth. All that usual issues that we want to try and avoid. The one additional thing that we have to add to this, and I was just going to add it now rather than prior to the video, is in order for this to work we also need one other additional table. We're going to need a date table and that table it simply just consists of this date table uh, a distinct list of all just the dates that we are using here uh, and it will become more valuable or not valuable sorry it will become more um, obvious why we need it as we move on but if you're used to working with databases especially relationship databases you understand why we need to have this uh, separate uh, date table uh, for doing this. So what I'm going to do is just create another sheet and we'll call this one date and all I'm going to do is go and copy this column uh, just paste it in column A, so we've got the date there. We'll put it into date format. And all I'm going to do is go date, uh, remove duplicates, okay. And yeah, so it was July to June of 20, or 2020, so you can see that's all the dates we've got available. And just as a recap for anyone who wants it, to convert that into a table, all we need to do is click that table button. Yeah, my table does have headers because we've got the date header there. Click OK, and then that's now converted into a table for us. And lastly, in the table design, I'm just going to change this and call this date table, just so we know what that one is. So we've got the four pieces of information now. We've got the, the date table, so we can obviously um, group everything by date. What the sales were per country and date. What the budgeted amounts were per country and date. And lastly, obviously, the mapping table for country to the country code. So the first thing that we need to do is identify the relationships between each one of these tables. So all we need to do for that is we go into our data tab and you'll see over the far right hand side or just off the middle we've got this relationships button here. So it's going to sit sit, and we're going to click a relationships and then you can see at the moment it starts as blank so we just need to go in and define those relationships. So the first one we need to do is obviously we need to make sure there's a relationship between country and obviously the two uh, budget and sales. 
So we're going to go into here, we'll go table and we can find the country table. And the column that we want to use to map is going to be the country code because country code is the unique reference between country and budget and sales. So country, country code, related table, and we can go into here and we'll get budget. And we want to use the country code, so we can do OK. Oh, and it went a bit slow there. And then we're going to do another one. So this time we're going to go between the uh, country, country code, and this time we can do the sales. So it's going to be the country code there. Click OK. Uh, and you can see as you build along what it looks like. So you can see what our table is. So we've got the bu uh, the budget country code, and it's related to the country code within the country table, and so forth with sales as well. Uh, next one we need is we've got the date table. So we now need to go into here, and we need to go our date table, and it's going to be yep, yeah, just a date because only one field in there. And then we can go into our budget table and select date. And then we can go into our date table again. And this time we want sales. Oh, and you can see Excel has automatically recognized that um, it, it's obviously done a search and it realized that this is a, based on the naming, it's obvious that we're gonna probably want that date column. So you will notice that Excel will make um, a suggestion um, based on what it feels would be the actual column. Uh, and you can see it's populated there in that example. Cool, so we can enter there. So let's just recap on what we've got here. So we've got the budget is matched to the country, budget is also matched to the data table, our sales table is mapped to the country, and our sales table is also mapped to the data table. So I believe that is everything we have. So we've got the date against those and the country against those. So I think we're all ready to go. So once you're happy with your relationships, all you now need to do is close out of here. And now we're going to go and proceed with inserting a pivot table. So just to make this for presentation purposes, I'm going to go onto this essential Excel sheet here. And I'm just going to go into insert a pivot table. And as you're probably familiar with using, you would even normally go into this top option here. So you can say, you know, you're just going to select a table or range of data. What we're actually going to do is go use an external data source, choose connection. If we then go into tables, you can see this first option at the top here, this workbook data model, and you can see it's recognized that data model what we've built with those four tables. If you hadn't done the relationships, obviously you wouldn't see this top part here, you would just see these available tables here. So once we've selected that, we can go into open. And where do we want this? Okay, it's obviously selected that we're gonna go to C7, what was our last active cell on the sheet, and go okay. And you can see it's just now thinking about it. And yet, there we go, we've got a pivot table published for us. So when we now look over the right-hand side here, we can see we've got our four separate tables. And with each, and in, within each of those tables, you can see the fields available to us. So straight away, it, we can see that it's worked, everything is consolidated into this table, and we can now proceed with populating our pivot table as we require. So the first thing we want is to take from our budget. So I'm just gonna take the amount from here. And then we can go down here and we can pick country. So we want the country from the country table. Uh, well, that's the only place that actually is available. And then the last one we can go into is sales. And then we can go down to sales amount. And actually we don't want country on there. There's quite a lot of countries, so we, we don't actually need that there. So we're just gonna take country out. And what I'm gonna do is go into the data table to pull in our date. So uh, just to recap here, I know we can see there's a date column in the budget and obviously also in the sales table, but we need to ensure that we're pulling date from the date table because this is our central point for date. And then we're gonna use this as a starting point and then the other fields will map against this. So to avoid any problems, uh, we just need to make sure we get date from our date table. And we can see that everything has now mapped into here for us. One thing we just need to do actually, just before we get confused, so the first one I pulled in here was budget. So I'm just gonna go um, field settings and we're gonna go into put budget. And I'm gonna just change the number format to a number. Okay, okay. And then the second one was then our sales. And change that to a number as well. 
Okay, so there we are. We've now got a pivot table that has summarized our information. And we can see the benefit of this is the tables are still separate. So they're separate entities that we can continue to update with more information, but they're ultimately gonna get pulled through to this single table here. The other benefit we have with this as well is we could also insert a slicer. So let's go insert, and where has it gone? Over here, slicer. And let's go to the country tab. So this is where I sort of jumped ahead really by pulling country into the pivot table initially. Go to the country sheet and we're going to select country. And you can see we've now got this slicer available to us. And let's go down to somewhere like uh, the United Kingdom, duh, 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 if it is even there. No, it's not there. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Um, let's pick another random country. I don't know what the numbers are going to show. Um, let's go United States of America. So there, we can now see the benefit of being this slicer in is we're able to now filter the table and see the different amounts um, based on each country. And you go to UAE as well, uh, Uruguay, any other one available to us. And it's now got it all centrally stored into that pivot table. So this right here is basically the main reason of why you start using relationships uh, when working with data, especially in multiple tables or multiple pieces of information that you're working with. One other bit we can do just to go a bit further with this. Okay, so just to improve this and go one step further, we can actually add a measure that will allow us to work better with this budget and sales amount. All we need to do is we're going to go into our pivot table and the first one is budget. So I'm just going to right click onto budget and you can see I've just done that on the right hand side here. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm just going to go to add measure. So you can see it's in the, uh, the budget sheet. So what's my measure name going to be? Well, I'm actually going to call this uh, the budget. And the formula for this is going to be the sum. And it's going to be, where has it gone? Budget amount. Close that. Okay, and you can now see we've actually got this measure in here, uh, what's going to be the budget amount. Uh, and all it is is just the sum of the amount. And this works really well just because obviously one, it defines it as the actual value what we're looking for, but also it's going to work when we come to want to do other measures um, like changing like the variance, maybe the difference between the budget and the sales amount. So I'm just also going to come down to sales and do the same down here. So I've got sales, measure name is sales. And the formula for this is going to be equal sum. And we want sum of do, 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 sales amount. Close our brackets there. Go enter. And we can see we've got that value in our available to us here as well. So let's just actually just go into edit measure. Uh, let's just make sure it is a month number. Just only notice that. So we want it into number format. And also, if we go into budget, we can go edit measure into number, like so. So you could you could do this when we first set it up. I just uh, forgot to do it, so now I'm just going back and doing it now. And then, when if we remove these two that we had here, what we can do is now just drag in budget and also bring drag in the sales, and you can see how it works the same. But we can now identify these actually as what they are: the budget and the sales. The one last thing that I'm going to add into this is another key piece of information could be to see how does our actual sales amount fare against the amount we were budgeted for. So all I'm going to do here is just go into our sales table and do add a new measure. And this time we're going to call this the VAR uh, percentage. And basically all that stands for is the variance. And I'm just going to come in and do our formula here. So this time I'm going to do is divide, open brackets. So our numerator, we're going to do a calculation here because we want to find initially what the, the difference is. So for us, because we've now got those, um, the, so because we've now got those measures available to us, all we need to do is reference those. So if I start typing sales, you can see we have this sales measure here. So double click that. So we want to do that minus uh, the budget. And you can see when I start typing that, you can see obviously we've got the budget, 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 and the budget sum of amounts. So these are all, everything was available to budget, but because we've got that measure, we're just gonna use that one there. Just makes it a lot tidier on the page as well. So the next thing we're gonna do once done that is put in the denominator. And the denominator for us is going to be that budget amount again. 
and then alter, alternate result. So if there is an error and uh, for whatever reason, we just want to show blank. So for us, we're going to just go into one more. Oh, I'll just click that a bit. So you can just do comma and I'm just going to put in here blank like that, like so. And then that is the entirety of our formula. So what it's going to do, it's going to take our sales amount and the minus off our budget. So it will tell us obviously what our amount increased or decreased is. It will then take that uh, increased, decreased amount, divide against the budget to then give us a percentage. So what the variance percentage is. And lastly, all we need to do for that is we'll just change this to our number and we'll put it to percentage, one decimal place and select OK. And we've now got that variant percentage here. So let's just drag that into our table as well. And we can now see what our percentage variance is. So for that first one, we can see we've got the 2196 and then the 2204. And obviously that's been a percentage increase of 0.4%. And actually looking down that page there, there's not been really a great deal of change happened at all. And I don't know what's happened to my slicer. So I'm just gonna enter one more time. So we go slicer and we want the country here. And obviously the benefit of having done those measures and also the additional variance percentage measure as well, is when we go to select any one of our countries, we can see that we're gonna get that information automatically populated for us as well. So this is a really good technique to be using. Not only does it simplify working with multiple tables of data, it also just gives you that streamlined way of working with it, allows continuous update to the data as well, and also it gives this professional uh, presentation ability when it comes to like going through either with a colleague or presenting this information back in live time. So hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do give it a like. It's not only greatly appreciated by myself, but helps that all important YouTube algorithm. If it's the first time finding the channel or you're a repeat viewer, please do subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification button, and that way you'll be notified of all of our future videos. Before you go, don't forget to check out the other videos on our channel. You'll see everything from other functions and formulas through to tips and tricks. We've also created some playlists so you can see these categorized together. So make sure you check those out and get all those useful information. And obviously, as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button.